After hours and hours of internet research and talking to some experts, I finally nailed down a working solution for my radiant floor heat source. If you're building a garage or shop, this is a great option to provide even comfortable heat. I began by placing two inches of foam on the floor, taping the seams, and installing one inch around the perimeter to isolate the slab from the ground and foundation. Then I attached oxygen barrier pecs in four loops of 250 feet each to the wire mesh and poured the concrete. I bought reclaimed ISO roof foam off Craigslist, which provides an R value of 30 in the walls and 49 in the ceiling. I live in central New York, and over the winter we have an average temperature of 25 degrees. I plan to keep the shop at about 55 degrees. The heart and soul of any heating system is going to be your heat source. You can go with a tankless unit like I did, or you can get an old-fashioned tank water heater. That's going to take up a lot of floor space and have a couple other disadvantages. This is a Takaji JR2 uh, propane heater. It also comes in natural gas. It was under $500 on Amazon. And what's great about this is it is anywhere from 19,000 to 140,000 BTUs. The flame inside is computer controlled and variable. So if you're calling for a lot of heat, it puts out more BTUs. And if you just need a little bit of hot water, it'll put out a smaller flame. It'll output 6.6 .6 gallons per minute on the highest setting, which is plenty to run two showers in your house or handle a 1200 square foot shop and heat the concrete. You're going to need a four inch vent. Um, this has a damper in it to keep cold air from coming in and a condensation drain built in for any water. It also has a cold air intake, so it takes cold air from outside and burns that. The way this works is the exhaust comes out here and the cold air intake is all around the side. And the cold air actually gets warmed up as it passes the exhaust gas coming out. If you don't have that, this plate doesn't come on it. You have to buy that separately and it will take air from your living environment and bring it inside and use that for combustion. But I didn't want to take warm air and just blow it outside. Uh, this runs on 120 volts, which is super convenient. It doesn't even draw a lot of power. It just runs a little fan in here and the computer board and you can set the temperature anywhere from 99 degrees up to 167 degrees. This system is called pumping away where the pump is located on the hot side of the heater. This does a couple of things. One, when the water gets hot it gives off gases. So we have our air separator right here. Also when water gets heated up it expands. We have our expansion tank. By putting the pump on this side when you create less pressure on a fluid it releases more gases, which is fine. So we have the air separator on this side. And when the pump first turns on, it's going to create a lower pressure where the expansion tank can help that. Also, by putting this pump on this side, we can have a bleed valve up high to help get rid of the air when we first fire the system up and fill it with water. So you can just change this by adding a few valves here. So if you want to change the pump out later, you can. And check valves to make sure that the water flows in one direction only. So in this system here we have our cold water coming in, comes to a T, goes through a pressure regulator, this is set at about 15 pounds of pressure, comes up through an on off valve which allows me to turn off the water, goes through a one way check valve, and then it goes into this T which goes up into the water heater. On a tankless unit you should buy these valves that allows you to turn off the water from the heating system and you can hook a garden hose here and here and you can flush the system with vinegar to clean out the heat exchanger. You should do that about once a year. Once the water is heated, it comes out of this pipe, goes along here, you need to have a temperature gauge so you know what your temperature is and pressure coming out of the system. I have a bleed valve right here so I can bleed the system quickly, we'll go over that comes along here, here's your air separator, so any air will come out the top. Also you have your pressure tank right here, which helps maintain the pressure. And then we come down to our circulator. From the circulator pump, through another check valve, into our floor, goes down through our floor, comes back up in this black pipe, comes along here, goes through another temperature and pressure gauge, where it goes back into the system. Now with the pumping away system, you're supposed to be able to bleed it very quickly by having this one valve at the top. Let's see what happens. So I turn this open a little more, and I'm getting a lot of bubbles out of there. So I got the valve pretty far open, and you can see all the bubbles coming out of the water. 
That tells me there's still bubbles in the system. So we're gonna let this run for a few minutes. Now we're gonna turn on the circulator pump. A lot of air coming out. Oh boy. A couple of big ones right there. Okay, so we just fired up the unit. It's running now and this temperature thing is great for checking out what you got going on. You can set your temperature here very easily. This information will tell you the incoming water temperature, the outgoing water temperature, and your gallons per minute. So right now I have a thousand feet of PEX under the floor in four different loops and I'm getting 1.3 gallons a minute. You turn this up, you're gonna hear the flame start to increase. Incoming water is still 63, but now the outgoing water is 117, 118 degrees. And then this will just turn the unit on and off. All right, so my system's been running for about an hour. If we come over here, we look at the floor with the infrared. You can see the heat lines going through the floor. So that's 43 degrees in the middle. Come over here, it's a it says it's about 50. But what's really cool is if you come over here and you look at the rest of the floor, you can just see all of the heat loops in the floor. And obviously you can see the heat loop, there's my hand, starts over in this area. And as you go, there's the end of the heat loop. And then that's the next heat loop next to it. That is so cool. So we're gonna say we're right at $2,000 to, to install in-floor heating on a 1,200 square foot garage. If you're building a new shop or garage, radiant floor heat is a great option. It keeps the heat down low where you are, whether you're working at a workbench or under a vehicle. If any snow falls off your vehicle, it melts quickly away. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like this video.